Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday, November the 15th. It's good to be with you this morning here at Trinity. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. O come, let us worship. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 82. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and so show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, judge the earth. For all the nations are your inheritance. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Wisdom, reading from chapter 6 and verse 1 to 11. Listen then, kings, and understand, rulers of remote lands. Take warning. Hear this, you who govern great populations. Take pride in your hosts of subject nations. For sovereignty is given to you by the Lord and power by the Most High, who will himself probe your acts and scrutinize your intentions. If therefore as servants of his kingdom you have not ruled justly, nor observed the law, nor followed the will of God, he will fall on you swiftly and terribly. On the highly placed a ruthless judgment falls, the lowly are pardoned out of pity, but the mighty will be mightily tormented. For the Lord of all does not cower before anyone. He does not stand in awe of greatness, since he himself has made small and great and provides for all alike. But a searching trial awaits those who wield power. So, monarchs, my words are meant for you, so that you may learn wisdom and not fall into error. For those who in holiness observe holy things will be adjudged holy, and accepting instruction from them will find their defense in them. Set your heart, therefore, therefore on what I, I have to say. Listen with a will, and you will be instructed. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. He stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. If anything, this past year and these last few months has reminded us that institutional racism is alive and well. That there are parts of our world that have seen a significant spite in hate crimes in sorts of all forms. Often in sociology we refer to double or triple discrimination as a phenomenon where somebody may experience multiple levels of discrimination. Both Samaritans and lepers in Jesus' day experienced prejudice and discrimination. And here we have a story in Luke's Gospel that captures the complexity of that discrimination. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem and he passes through a no-man's no land between Samaria and Galilee. 
as is true today, the significantly marginalised in society lived on nondescript marginal land, much like our trailer parks or garbage dumps or slums today, because they have been shunned or forced out of those places that were de deemed desirable. As Jesus enters into this nondescript village, he is approached by ten lepers. It is unlikely that they lived in the village because they were lepers, and possibly they were congregating at the entrance to the village to beg. They are rather observant lepers because they kept their distance from Jesus and called out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he sees them, he says to them, go and show yourself to the priests. In Jesus' day, the word leprosy was used for all kinds of skin conditions that could potentially be contagious. In addition, such illness was associated with religious defilement and in the Hebrew context required religious authority if somebody was deemed to be cleansed. In this sense, we might assume that the vast majority of them were of the Jewish faith and were willing to observe the Hebrew law to verify that they had been healed and cleansed. And as Luke points out to us, they went on their way and were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back to go back to Jesus while shouting the praises of God. Luke tells us that rather than keeping his distance this time, he prostrates himself at Jesus' feet and thanks him for showing him mercy. It is then that Luke wants to carefully point out to us that the man is a Samaritan. It's important in that as both a Samaritan and a leper in a Hebrew settlement, he would have faced double discrimination. But the added importance to the Gospel narrative is that Luke is pointing at, out to us and to the first century followers of Jesus as the readers that this man was part of God's larger compassion to the ends of the world. In a sense, he's also showing up the other nine, who we assume are Hebrews, who should have known better. That not only does God's mission of grace and compassion include those who were rejected and marginalized or discriminated against, but their response shows us up for who we truly are as the ungrateful, entitled, and privileged, even if we suffer in the same way as they do. It is Jesus' response that says it all. We're not ten made clean. But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? The questions are not addressed to any specific person in the text, but they are clearly directed at us by the Gospel writer and ask us that pertinent question. Would you come back to give thanks or would you have shown up by somebody who you think is below you. It is then that Jesus turns to the Samaritan who used to be a leper. Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. There's been much written about the difference between heal, cleansed and well that tries to work around the misdirected theology that Jesus constantly addresses. The suggestion that there was a direct link between sin and suffering or that suffering is a result of sin. It is a theological problem that is embedded in the Hebrew Scriptures, most importantly in the book of Job, and the one that Jesus was more than willing to challenge and reject. But there's something about the nature of healing that is much bigger than solving a physical ailment. It is the sense that it is worth thinking of healing as part of the greater restoration work of God in our lives that addresses all forms of brokenness, including victimization and discrimination. That word variously translated has healed or has cured or made well or saved you is suskiken and carries with it the fullness of being made complete or restored or whole, holy or fully as God intended. Not only was the man cured of his leprosy but his humanity as one deeply loved by God is restored by Jesus. This stands in strong contrast to the other nine who were cleansed, ekatheresethensen, which is only used twice in the Greek scriptures and specifically in Luke's gospel and in reference to healing. 
Luke, traditionally referred to as the physician, wants us to get something about the quality or nature of the healing of the ten lepers, and more specifically, about the man who is a Samaritan. My sense is that within this context of profound rejection, marginalization and discrimination, Luke wanted us to understand that Jesus did not simply heal the Samaritan leper from an ailment, rather that he, in opposition to every level of prejudice common in his day, restored his humanity, and that such a work is a work of faith. It reminds us that salvation is not simply about the purchase of souls, but about the being fully restored to the dignity and worth of what it means to be a whole or holy human being through the grace and compassion of Christ. That ultimately, this is the reality of the kingdom of God. And in such opposition to the hatred, bigotry, and fascist vitriol that has become so common in our world. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hero Israel. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And again this week I'm going to lead us through some Celtic um, intercessions. We pray. We pray for fruitfulness. We thank you. For a generous spirit. We thank you. For wisdom and faith. We thank you. For old age and new birth, we thank you. For those who have gone before us, seeds planted in your rich pasture, with a hope of life eternal, may the enduring spirit live on, enriching and empowering our lives. Their loves ling love linger, their presence be near, until we meet once more. For your embracing love, a father's love, a mother's love, the love that sees our failings and forgives us, the love that sees our joys and embraces us, the love that knows no end or beginning, a love that could die for us. We bless you. Eternal God, who caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. A couple of quick announcements. Just a reminder that we have the St. Margaret's Christmas Tea and Market this coming Saturday, November the 18th, from 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. And uh, the market offers crafts, jewellery, decor, and a bake table. And if you'd like to, to, to have a sit-down tea, the cost is $10 for adults and $5 for children under 10. And all are welcome to attend. And just a reminder, we've started guitar and ukulele lessons at St. Margaret's every Wednesday between 5 and 6 p.m. Uh, we attempt to provide instruments for everybody who comes, and, uh, but you're more than welcome to attend. And then a reminder, our next spaghetti dinner will be on Saturday, November the 25th at 5 p.m. And uh, the, uh, we have had to increase the price to $13 per person because of inflation. And then a reminder, our Christmas dinner um, here at Trinity will be on Saturday, December the 2nd at 5 p.m. And uh, there are 100 tickets available. They're $20 for adults, $10 for children, and uh, between the ages of 6 and 12, and children under 5 are free. Tickets are available from the church office or on a Sunday morning at church. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>